Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 68 for Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. Widgets. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. One big thing that sets Android apart from its mobile OS brethren is the inclusion of widgets on the home screen. Love them or hate them, widgets can be a great way to save yourself the trouble or the time opening up an app to find information that you might need. Personally, I've never been too fond of widgets that show revealing stuff like my Gmail inbox or my Hangouts messages, but everyone has their own level of comfort in this regard, and that's kind of the point. Instead of your home screen displaying nothing but a row of your favorite apps, why not add an extra screen that shows music controls or a news feed or something else, something that catches your eye or informs you during normal use without having to remember to launch an app to find it. Today, I have three widgety apps that I find pretty darn useful. It's this week's Roundup. There's no doubt that widgets can be powerful. They can also provide quick access to things without the need to launch an app. But sometimes they can reveal too much. What if you like widgets, but you don't want them on display for the world to see all the time? That's where Pop-Up Widget 2 comes into play. I'll tap the plus to choose a widget from the apps I already have installed on my device. These are the same widgets that I find and have access to if I long press on the home screen to add a widget permanently in the normal way. Here, I'll scan to a widget that I like and tap that to accept it. Now comes the configuration that tells Pop-Up Widget 2 exactly how I want my pop-up to behave. I can modify the icon, I can set a custom background if I want, edit the margins around that. Setting an animation style actually changes how the widget appears and goes away when it's tapped. Position of the widget as compared to the location of the icon on the screen. There's simply too many to rattle off here, but you'll definitely want to scroll all the way down and take a look at the grid to drag out the widget to a comfortable size so you don't end up with a dense widget opening inside a one-by-one -one block zone. Live Preview helps you do this effectively. Now, once I like what I have, I'll just tap Save, and here you see a list of all the widgets I pre-configured inside Pop-Up Widget 2. All of these are accessible when I go to my home screen and go through the motions of adding a widget like normal. Just search for the Pop-Up Widget uh, widget, and once I drop that, I'm asked to pick which pre-configured widget I want to drop on my home screen. Doing that places a simple app icon for that widget. And now, the cool part. Just tap the icon, and the pre-configured widget appears magically, ready to use. When I'm done, I tap outside it, and it disappears. It keeps everything clean and, more importantly, obscured. This is a great way to get the benefits of using something like an email or text messaging widget without placing all that highly personal stuff on the home screen for anyone to read. Find Pop-Up Widget 2 for $1.50 in the Play Store. If you listen to a lot of music and audio on your device, then this next widget solution might come in super handy for you. Here's the dilemma. Let's say I like Pandora for music, and I also use Pocket Casts for my podcast listening habits. If I want a music widget that gives me controls for my home screen, I have to install playback controls widgets for each of those music or audio services. Why not group them all together into one single playback widget? That's Jack's Music Widget. The support list for this widget is pretty long, covers most of the biggies that you're likely to be using, though Beatport is missing, unfortunately, but Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, RDO, SoundCloud, Rhapsody, and so many more are supported. I'll go ahead and create that widget and drop it in. And now, when I launch Pandora and play something, that widget will support and control the music from Pandora. 
Once I decide to switch over to Pocket Cast for podcast listening, I just hop into Pocket Cast and begin playback of the content I want to hear. Doing that is enough for Jack's music widget to instantly switch the controls of the widget over to Pocket Cast now. And for $1.99, you can purchase the Plus version, which gives you some customization options for changing the look of the two included widgets. While a song is playing through one of the supported services, you'll also get the album art passed through, which is a nice bonus feature. And tapping that will take you through to the app that it's playing. Keep things simple. Find Jack's Music Widget for free with a pro version for $1.99 in the Play Store right now. So you say you don't like all the widget options out there and you just want to design your own. Well, if you have a little time on your hands and even more so the imagination to create something cool, then you might enjoy spending some time with Zuper Widget Pro. Zuper is a do-it-yourself widget construction kit. Though the learning curve might take you a bit to get comfy with its approach. I'll go ahead and drop a Zuper widget on my home screen to kick things off and then tap that widget to get into construction. I'll tap empty. That's gonna create a blank widget and then layout. Here's where I create the components of my widget. Let's create a simple weather and time widget for my home screen in this walkthrough. I'm gonna tap the plus and that actually adds a layer, the first layer. And then I'll choose a module of which there are plenty to choose from. You can see here text, shapes, icons, uh, bitmap images, progress bars, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select text. I'll go to content and find conditions and temperature, and selecting that shows that specific info now inside the preview window. That is my starting point. I can then manipulate this to fit and look however I like, things like shifting it around, changing the font, making it larger or smaller, even assigning a tap action for that particular layer. I repeat this process, selecting this time the current time with the AM PM clock content. And after a lot of futzing, I get something that looks, okay, let's face it, it looks okay at best. But hey, I'm not a designer. If you have the eye and the time and, oh yeah, a good plan, you can create some really neat stuff. You can also load in other people's creations easily found in the Play Store. Like these Vico Zuper widget skins, you just find one in that pack that you like. You can just scroll through and see all the options. Find one you like, go ahead and accept it, and the next time you hit your home screen, it should update. See? Not bad. Zuper is one of those apps that will take a lot of thought to really master, but if you're up for the task, the possibilities truly are endless. Find Zuper Widget in the Play Store for free with a pro upgrade for $2.99. Now, I'm a Google Play Music subscriber. One of my absolute favorite and indispensable widgets is the Play Store My Library widget. It actually shows a nice graphical grid of the previous albums and playlists that I've listened to, meaning with one tap, I can jump right back to that album and start playing. Here we go. We'll get it back up there. There you go. Uh, start bang with, playing without having to scan through or to search my library, any of that stuff. It's perfect for when you kind of jump in the car to go somewhere. You don't want to fool around with your music library. All you do is tap, listen, and go. As always, I know I've missed some great widgets. Uh, there's so many of them. I can only do three. Uh, throw your favorites my way, if you would. I would love that. Arena at twit.tv. And hopefully I'll talk about those on a future episode. All right. So up next is an app that won't replace owning one of these fancy new Nexus devices, not by a long shot, but it might get you all stoked to get one and it'll make your screenshots look nifty too. It's this week's big app. So you're a developer or maybe you're not. You're just someone who wants to make sure the Android screenshots you share look awesome. Instead of a flat image, you want a little pizzazz. And what's the best kind of pizzazz when Google finally releases the new Nexus Hounds? Why, having the Nexus 5X and 6P as frames for your screens, of course. Okay, maybe that's a little nerdy, but you are watching an Android app review show, so I think that you qualify. And if you want your screens to look awesome and up to date with the latest hardware frames, check out Screener. With it, you're essentially given three categories of hardware frames to choose from. Flat which shows a bit of the device's subtle styling. So you'll see things like the camera 
and the bezel will shine through, making it look a bit more real. Not to mention, flat is also where you're going to find frames for most Android Wear devices on the market right now. Well, except my personal favorite, the Huawei Watch. I'm sure it's coming soon. At least I hope so. Anyways, the second category is 3D, which gives a nice dimensional slant to the frame. That gives a glimpse of the outer edge of the device, makes it kind of look stylish. Screens look really nice in this one, in my opinion. And finally, minimal, which is a head-on shot that doesn't show those camera and bezel details. It makes for a bit of a cleaner presentation. Select your pick and then tap the plus to add a screenshot that you have on your device already. Add to drop a shadow, maybe a little reflective light to the screen. And now you can work on the background behind the device. Many, you'll see in the Play Store, opt for a simple color backdrop there. But you can also select an image for the background and then dial in a nice blur so the frame stands out against it. And once you have that perfect frame, that perfect screenshot, you can save or share it out for use in whatever ways you wish. Oh, and you can also add a frame to your favorites for quick access later, though I do wish that favorite would include more than just the frame itself. Those shadow and background settings would be nice and handy there as well. Regardless, Screener is a great way to spruce things up on your Play Store page or when you share screens on social networks. Find Screener for free in the Play Store. All right, so having that app does nothing to quench any desire you might have for the new Nexus devices. But I can tell you right now, this Nexus 6P is awesome and your life is incomplete until you can get one for yourself. Uh, I will have a full review of this device on next week's Before You Buy. So if you're interested in a hardware upgrade, I hope you'll check it out then. As for this show, you can always send your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. Or you can post those to the subreddit for the show. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. Share them with me. Share them with the world there. Everyone has access. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at twit.tv slash live or twit.tv. Click on the live button. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell. I'll see you next week in the arena.